Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Today y Mañana. I'm Alex. This is Xavier. We're excited to have you joining us today. We have a fantastic show today. Yeah, we really do. Uh, we're going to be joined at, at around 1025 by Dave Garcia. He's the owner uh, and operator of Kitchen Catering and Events. Amazing food there. And then a little later on at 1045, we're going to be joined by Christina De Marea and Jennifer DeNoya from the Charlottesville Opera. So like I said, we have three stars three today. Three stars on our show today. So it's going to be a lot of fun. As always, we're presented by Emergent Financial Services. We are powered by Cristel Noel State Farm, another star-studded uh, agency. They have a lot of uh, the Spice Girls. That's um, right, the Spice insurance, Girls. <laughs> as uh, as um, as we talked about with uh, the Jennifer when, when she came on, and then uh, as always, we are partnering with Forward Adelante, the Latino networking group here in Charlottesville, Virginia. So a lot to cover today. A lot to, to be cover, sure. Yes, there's yes. a lot going on. There's always there's always things going on in the financial world, so we're going to do well, a little brain. One, of, one of the things I, I always love to say is that is that the only constant in life is change, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's always something going on, you know. Whether it be, and it doesn't matter what industry, this is some, something going on. You wake up in the morning, and you're pretty much guaranteed it's not that morning is not going to go. That whole day is not going to go <laughs> like exactly yesterday, the way right? You planned. Or yeah, I mean that's that's the worst What's part. The plan, it's not going to go plan. plans. That's right, exactly. So w one of the things that um, I was reading this morning, and I've been reading about about this for the last uh, few weeks is is all the changes that are occurring really globally right to a certain mm -hmm. respect with res with with the concept of taxing Tax right codes. Um, because I know that we're looking at what is the possibility of capital gain taxes going up going here up. in the US what is the possibility that corporations are going to have to pay globally a a tax right in other words at a minimum a minimum tax, tax no matter where you are because uh, historically what you've seen is a lot of companies have moved abroad because you know those particular countries like Ireland they say you come to our country you to pay taxes. Of exactly. course, a lot of companies decided to go there, right? So there was this kind of concept of the you know taxes were were coming down across the globe because there was a competition to bring in businesses, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's kind of turning around. And how does that impact, right? In other words, how does that impact people's lives, people's portfolios? You and I have to exactly. think about things of that sort. Mm -hmm. How that's going to you know, how we need to navigate those changes that are occurring globally and domestically into people's portfolios, mm -hmm. right? And also, how do we, how can we possibly maybe avoid some of those issues or taxes that are, without any doubt, going to hit us in the near future, right? Exactly. So, so, so I, I, I'm picking your brain. Exactly. Because, well, you're not the only one not because, so yeah. Jerry's commenting, I enjoy picking out his brain. He has a big one. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> ah, the only constant in life, Jerry says, is change in taxes. And taxes are no bueno, Chito. <laughs> That's right. Well, there's one there, more, but we don't want to talk about that one. <laughs> true. <laughs> That's the last one. Well, yeah, um, exactly. Exactly. But, I mean, it's always something to think about. So I think we hear sometimes these far-off concepts like capital gains tax. So we sit there and say, well, what does that right. even mean? And that's, to put it really simply, basically, capital gains tax is you buy a stock, stock goes up in value. When you sell it, the tax you pay on the difference between what you bought it and what you sold it for That's right. is your capital gains tax. So it can definitely affect your investment portfolio, particularly if the jump that they're talking about, they're basically talking about moving the long-term capital gains, so that's something you keep for more than a year before you sell it, from about 15 to whatever your income tax bracket is. So now you could potentially be talking 20, 22, 25, exactly. 27, all the way up into the, I mean, depending right. how wealthy you are, up into the 37 range uh, that you would be taxed at. So it changes very much so the, the calculation in terms of how much you get when you invest. Um, Terry Miller, he answered your question for you. Jerry's is death. <laughs> death and tax is very true. Yeah, we won't avoid that one. But. You know, and then the corporate tax, the interesting thing about that is, of course, corporations are pass-through entities. That's right. So when you increase the corporate tax rate, it basically has three effects, right? About a third, when they've done studies on this, about a third of the tax increase um, ends up going basically to through to the employees. In other words, the corporation will pay the CEO and everyone else less. A third of the tax will end up going 
to the consumer in the sense the corporation will just raise prices slightly to compensate. And about a third of it goes to the shareholders. So that means you as the investor, in other words, your mutual funds and so forth. What will happen is it changes your dividends that you'll receive. That's right. From the corporation. So it, about a third of so the effect like, so, would so come back so wait a minute. to you that as sounds like uh, bad news on all three fronts. Yeah, especially uh, if you work. If, I mean, especially if you work for the corporations, like, oh, gee, now it's I I'm have making to pay less. More for their food, I made less money. If, I, if I, I invest in the stock, I'm making less money, and if I'm a consumer, I'm paying more for whatever product oh, yeah. I'm buying. It, it can be triple bad news depending on your yeah. connection to the. To the I just company. want to make sure I understood that, Alex. Exactly. No, that's how it works. Because I mean, because unfortunately, like, corporations are pass throughs. They don't really exist right. in a physical right. sense. There's exactly. no actual person there. Yeah. It just goes right through. And so the question is, how do we as investors, as the average person investing, think about that? What do you do when you're faced with, okay, so people, Xavier and Alex are telling me that capital gains taxes might go up. What do I do with this information? You know? Of course, the, the one thing that I always tell people is you don't invest in industries or companies based on the tax consequence. Mm -hmm. you, you invest based on what you think that company is going to do long term and what you think those investments or that industry is going to do long term, right? Because if you if you invest in a company based on you think it's going to raise its taxes, what, are, what the impact is going to be on that company, and ignore that that company may go up 100% over the next exactly. six months, well, who cares? There's right? fundamentals are, that are even exactly, more important exactly. than so trying to avoid the, taxes. The question is, the, as you mentioned, how does that impact somebody's livelihood, somebody's mm. portfolio? What can one do about that, right? And exactly. there's, certainly, there's certainly avenues that, I guess, investors can take to try to avoid some mm. of those um, taxing pitfalls. Exactly. I mean, right? the big ones is your IRAs, basically. Exactly. Also, I mean, 401ks, if it's a work. Because what's happening with an IRA and 401 ks is you're putting investments in something for your retirement, that the government's saying, because it's for your retirement, we will not tax you on the gains of this, right? At least while it's growing. So in other words, if you, if you have mutual funds in your IRA, right, and you, let's say you want to get out of one and buy another one, you don't have to be sitting there thinking, oh, I need to worry about paying taxes on the gains of this fund because I'm going to sell it to try to buy another one, right? You don't have to worry about that because it's in an IRA. Exactly. Right? And then, of course, the thing we always talk to people about is if you depending on where you think future taxes will be and where you think your future situation is going to be, that really determines your Roth IRA versus traditional That's IRA right. question. Because they're basically inverses of each other. The traditional yes. IRA, you basically the money you put in there, you don't pay taxes on now, but you pay taxes on later. That's right. It's a deferral the, of tax. Deferral yeah. of tax. And the Roth IRA, you're putting in money that's already been taxed, but you don't pay taxes when you take it out. So that's sort of up to you to sort of think about it and say, where do I expect taxes to be in the future? Uh, what is my situation going to look like in the future? Do I think I'm going to be making more money and being a higher tax bracket when I retire or now? And that'll help determine, that's really what, that's why you go and talk to financial advisors, is it helps you determine what's the right method to really think about it. Because I think the big takeaway is you don't want to be sitting there trying to make investment decisions. What do I buy or not buy based on the tax That's total. right. What you want to be doing is making account type decisions. In other words, you'll put your savings in an account type that helps you know, make you pay as few taxes as possible on your retirement savings so that then you can make investment decisions that are independent of that. Exactly. Yeah, and the only decision you have to make is whether you think that taxes are going to be higher tomorrow when you retire or today, or today. right? And of course, the, the income you're earning today, am I hitting the tax bracket? Am I, am I moving myself to the higher tax bracket? If exactly. I am, then maybe obviously the traditional IRA may make sense because if you keep yourself in the lower tax bracket. So these are all the questions you need to look mm -hmm. at and these are all the kind of questions we ask um, in, in, to our clients to say, what's the best for you? Exactly. Right? Um, but without a doubt, those are the two options. And I mean, there are other things that even, um, you know, uh, companies can do if you, if you own your own company. There's other plans that have the same function. Um, but uh, like I said, I mean, it's taxes are going up across the mm -hmm. board, um, but hopefully from an investment perspective in some accounts. You can still make wise decisions. That's not an issue, yes. Even even with that being the case. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, Johnny Ornella sends us good morning with a little cup of, uh, it looks like cafe there, cafe con leche, hopefully, oh. with, hopefully yeah. with azúcar. 
You know, as, as we always say, <laughs> uh, Tafeton Leche is a beautiful vehicle for a uh, for sugar. Absolutely, it certainly is. <laughs> as we do and say. Uh, and speaking of delicious things, oh. we're happy to to have on. We're excited to be joined by Dave Garcia. He's the owner and operator of Kitchen Catering and Events. It's just amazing, amazing it is. It food is. there. Dave, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Happy to be here. Thanks it's a pl pleasure to have you on. I, I, I still remember the event that we had for FABA uh, a couple of years ago. Mm. I think it was a couple of years, right? Because last year we couldn't have it. it but the like three. Yeah, I think three, three, three years, years ago. Okay, so, the the and, fall event. Oh, the, oh, you had like the shrimp that was on like on a little polenta or something. It was uh, so... Oh, yeah, like the shrimp and grits. Yes, yeah. it was so good. Oh, everything was just delicious. All I, know, all I know is I kept kind of getting up, trying to hide, make sure nobody knows. I, I was going for seconds, so it was, uh, it was really fabulous, fabulous. Is that good? There we go. We're getting him nice and close. We all want to hear what he had, has to tell us. <laughs> That's right. Um, so for those who don't know you, what sort of led you into the, the cooking space and to the creating kitchen catering and events? Well, um, back in 2007, when uh, my wife Morgan Hurt and I moved to Charlottesville, we... <laughs> had every intention to do that. But, um, you know, I, I believe that, that uh, around 2008, there was an economic crisis as well. Another financial crisis. Another financial <laughs> crisis. Not unrelated to taxes. I exactly. <laughs> but, um, and so we kind of like stopped that dream for a little bit and mm -hmm. uh, got, a couple, got, you know, jobs and worked in a couple of restaurants until 2013 when we decided to open the, the place and it was kind of like uh, you know a little bit a uh, little bit of luck um, my mother-in-law found this Craigslist ad for all this kitchen equipment and wow. stuff so and um, we're like oh let's go take a look and that was I don't know if you, if you know but uh, Chef Ted used to own a catering business and it was there where our old shop used to be. Uh. So we went and looked at it, and he was uh, retiring. He was mm -hmm. moving to Hawaii, I believe, and he oh, was just wow. done. Wow. That's a move. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and so we, we were like, yeah, this is, all this stuff is great, but what it, what's going to happen with the, with the space? And he said, if you want it, you know, talk to the landlord and... So we did, and we got the space. So it was, oh, so it was the space and the and, and, the, and all and the equipment. All this stuff. Wow. I mean, it was a hell of a deal. It was really a lot of stuff. I mean, tables, chairs, anything you need, you know, turnkey type thing. Wow. wow. Um, so we, uh, you know, pulled the trigger and we did it. Uh, obviously, you know, when when you open a restaurant, there's, um, you know, you create a little bit of, uh, you know, you know, people are excited that you're gonna open. Mm, so you kind of have um, clients like right away. Mm -hmm. When you do, when you start a catering business, you have no clients That's at right. all yep. because you are a nobody. That's you know, right. like no one knows you. You have to go out and get them. Correct. Yeah. So there was a, there were a lot of uh, family dinners that were paid, <laughs> <laughs> and you know friends and that kind yep. of thing. And that was the first couple of years, and um, so you know until you know you start getting into certain venues, you know, like Alumni mm -hmm. Hall, which is where yep. we, we had the event. Um, you know, wineries and that kind of thing. And, you know, we also, because of our restaurant connection with the town, we, uh, you know, were able to, you know, um, work with uh, some of these winemakers that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we just have known them for a long time. And, you know, they seem, well, one in particular, Jake Bushing, I don't know if you know him, but he has been moving from vineyard to vineyard, and he's now at Hark. Uh, which is awesome. His wine is the best. And um, Hart Vineyard is it locally here? It's in Free Union. Free yeah. Union, mm -hmm. ah, very close. Well, pretty local, yeah. And so you know, like everywhere where he has been, we have worked there. You know, we've done either like, you know, like little like vending food or like mm -hmm. wine dinners with them and that nice. sort of thing. So you know, that is a great way to you know promote yourself. You know. And, you know, because we would do a dinner, and if they liked it, uh, they'd be like, oh, this is great, give me your card, I might call you back later, you know, that kind yep. of thing. And so it was really kind of like that. My, my very first restaurant job, I, you know, I, it was like a weekend thing, and I, I really liked it. I just liked the, the hustling and, you know, how, like, it's just fast-paced, mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it's... Um, that action and, and, keeps you moving. Right. And, well, there's food and mm -hmm. drink. I was like, oh, this is perfect. 
So I, I, you know, very quickly just, you know, dropped whatever, whatever else I was doing. And I just decided to do that. I mean, I didn't decide it. I was just like, oh, this is fun. I'll just do this until I get tired of it. And it hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened. You're still <laughs> well, not tired of it. I mean, I am tired, but not tired of it. Of so. it yeah, <laughs> exactly. Different kind of tired. It's a different one. That's right. <laughs> to be sure. Probably um, a good one if you're that tired. <laughs> it, you know, when, when you do catering in restaurants as well, I mean, you have like a high season and a That's right. slow mm-hmm. season. And you want to make the best out of the, the of busy course. season. Of course. Yeah. And that's now. Yeah. So uh, it's, yeah, I, would, I would assume yeah. spring, summer, spring and fall, fall, right? Summer, summer you know, fall. like, in, I mean, for us at least, I yeah. don't know how it is for uh, other folks, but like July, August, they're not crazy. Mm. Just because, because it's too to, hot. You want to be able to breathe too yeah. in July and August. <laughs> and, like, and not be sweating. You yeah. know? And, and that probably has something to do with it. Also, the university is not uh, in, right. in, in mm-hmm. session. Mm-hmm. So, uh, which obviously last year that wasn't an issue. But um, yeah, and, that, and that's another thing. You know, EVA is, is a great you know, way of connecting. Of, of connecting mm-hmm. and, yeah. A lot so. goes on. So, what led, because I know you guys also have the kitchen. Kitchenette. Kitchenette. The, yes. The sandwich I should've, shop. So should have brought stuff, but what goes? Because that that was fascinating me. Because the first time I met you, I met you through the catering. Right. And you had you had catered for us, and then the second time you were well, meet me at the kitchenette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, you mean there's a sandwich shop? So I ended up <laughs> going there early. I said I'm going there early to have lunch before I meet with Gabe because I need to do this. And it was like incredible, fantastic. So what mm. led to like? Well, we're gonna go, and now we're gonna add this sandwich shop to right. the catering business. Well, so you know when when you know when you're doing catering and you know you have to be there to prep and mm-hmm. you know just yeah essentially that and we we're like hey, you know we're here all the time you know if, if, what if we you know open like a little sandwich like a like a store you know right because right. we're here anyway so. That, that was pretty much it. And uh, my wife loves sandwiches, so she uh, uh, so she's... she was like, oh, I want to do this. So, you know, we, uh, mainly her came up with a, with a menu. And um, we I do remember we had taken a trip to New York at some point, and we went to this uh, rest. Uh, it was a sandwich shop somewhere in Brooklyn, and we had the sandwich, and that was sort of like the inspiration for it. Mm. Um and uh, so that was like a thing, and, and we actually tried to, you know, not copy. But you, the general idea. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so we, we did our. We did, so not like so you, love, <laughs> you love Brooklyn so much, you're like, oh, we right. do this too. So we brought that here, and then, so that was like the very first sandwich that we had, which was a hot wet beef, that's what we call it. Ooh. And then, you know, we came up with a bunch of other ones. And uh, so we opened, that was like three years ago. Um, and so, you know, if little that everyone knew, the pandemic happened, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So all of our catering shut down. Like, there's nobody doing course, anything because no, nobody, nobody can get together. Events. And the sandwich shop basically kind of saved us. Otherwise, we would have uh, probably that's right, cause gone. It's just a takeout. Correct. So, uh, you know, that picked up a lot. And then we did have to move out of our old facility. So um, where have you moved to now? We moved to a little shop over on Nine and a Half Street, which uh, is right over there. Oh, so right here. So you could yeah. walk from this show, the studio. Show. Yeah, you know, this gas station here, there's a community a credit union bank yes, on, on East Jefferson and what is that, High or Ninth at that point? Well, anyway. If you just make a right there on East Jefferson and then immediate left, that's nine and a half straight, and we're in the right in the middle. Nice. And uh, you know that was last June, I believe, when we moved out of the other place into the new one, and uh, it's been great. The neighborhood's awesome. Um, there's just a lot going on. It's a good area. There's a lot of traffic. A lot of foot traffic. Um, not a lot of like actual car traffic, which yeah, is foot. awesome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mostly foot. Right. There's a lot of waters. I know there's a lot of non-profits. They don't, that's not yeah, the area. Casa, those little houses. Casa is right there yeah. in front that's of right. us. That's right. And the, the city uh, has like a little building there. They mm-hmm. do a lot of stuff there. So, and there's like law firms. I mean, it's like ideal. It is really there, is. Is there room in there to sit down and have a sandwich? There or it's just isn't just... At this, at okay. the, right now, we do have like a little lobby and people come in and um, order there. We have a, one table outside 
So if you want to come, uh, you might want to call and reserve it. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> <the only one. laughs> Reservations only. <laughs> the, for that special for, outside table. Up to four people, that's it. <laughs> um, oh, man, you already have some fans. So Rosalia de Rosalia Tardaro says, of course, a Brooklyn sandwich. We'll yeah. do it. Well, you says, know, it's, it's, it's amazing because, um, you know, I lived in the city for a very long period of time. Yeah. Right? Um, I, I grew up there. And um, it, w it was amazing at lunchtime. I mean, New York City is, you know, it's... It's a small island, but everybody lives upward. So right. when they come down or they come from, you know, when they come from Brooklyn and Queens and Staten mm -hmm. Island to the city, there's, there's, you know, 20 million people in the right. city, right? Yeah. So the sandwich shops, they're, I mean, they're not huge places. Right. But they are fast. I mean, they're you go in quick. there, they've got like 10 sandwiches or 20 sandwiches right. you can order. But by the time you get to that line, no, like, you what, better what do you know want? what you want yeah. because otherwise they're kicking you out of that You're place. It's just true. amazing. It really is. Let's go. Yeah. Come on. And they've got like five, six guys preparing the sandwiches. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. But they're all different. And it's just it's yeah. interesting because it's a Well, that one's called DeFonti's and it's in the Red Hook Defontes. District, I believe. Um, and yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. They only have two, you know, two sizes of sandwiches. The gigantic one and the the, the not so gigantic one. That's right. And and you know, like you're you know, you're there visiting, so you're just kinda like on your own time, you know? And we're like oh, just staring at the menu and, and the guy's like, Hey you ready? He's like, No, okay, move over. It's like oh my That's god. Right. Exactly. <laughs> there's people that want to order, you know. That's right. Exactly. And we finally like no you know, decided what we wanted and, and yeah, it was I mean, but you're right, absolutely right. It's it I mean they gotta turn it and burn yeah. it, you know. But it, the, the beauty of it, like I said, is that you know, there's just different sandwiches. It's not just ham and cheese, right? Or, yeah, it's or special. Or bologna or whatever. It's just it's a real about, experience. It's a meal, just between oh, two totally. bowls. Oh, yeah. Experience. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was when I went to your sandwich shop. The dish that I don't think I I wasn't hungry for the rest of the afternoon. It was like <laughs> <laughs> so good. I'm like, dang, this was dinner at lunchtime exactly. with a sandwich because it was like yeah. the, that's it was what, a nice, hefty, yeah, well, yeah that's exactly. What you want. Good, good to hear. You want from your plastic <laughs> sandwich. Um, so we'll do it, for our Spanish speech, we'll do a quick question in Espanol. In Espanol. Just to, to okay. spice things up a little bit. Y lleva supongo, ¿no? Sí, un poquito. Muy bien. Un poquito. Un poquito. Entonces, como un empresario latino, mm -hmm. ¿qué consejos tiene usted para otros latinos que, que quieren ser empresarios o dueños de, de negocios pequeños? Uh, pues es, ahora sí que... Um, o sea, si tienen una buena idea eh, y conocer gente en el medio también sirve bastante. Que, que, mm. Bueno, yo siento que la mayoría de las comunidades de, de inmigrantes son, eh, bueno, son unidas, ¿no? Sí, o sea, sí, sí. Se, se ayudan entre, entre ellos, nosotros. Este, eh, def, de, definitivamente, o sea, hacer un buen, uh, o sea, investigar bien mm. eh, qué es lo que quieren hacer, porque muchas veces... Alguien, yo puedo tener una idea que creo que es la mejor idea, pero cuatro o cinco personas ya, ya, la, ya la tuvieron, ¿no? Sí. Este, pero, pues sí, o sea, es, es básicamente, o sea, si tienes una buena idea y lo quieres hacer, hacerlo. Si no funciona, bueno, ni modo, ¿no? Pero no, o sea, no puedes no eh, hacer algo por el miedo a que no vayas mm, a... Es sí. lo más importante, no tener miedo. A tener, no tener éxito, miedo, exacto. Sí. Si, si tienes una idea buena... Uh -huh. Es, es a menos perseguir esa idea claro. y, y a ver dónde vas. ¿no? Sí. Y si, como usted dice, si falla, falla y puede tener otra idea o si no, pues va a trabajar. Con, con Exacto. Lo que... Cuando nosotros, eh, bueno, empezamos o queríamos abrir el negocio, eh, platicamos con una persona aquí en, en Square. Ah, sí, sí, sí. sí, okay. sí. Y, y bueno, nosotros, fue un poco chistoso porque nosotros, pues, pues no, pues, vamos a hacer catering y vamos a hacer la, la mejor comida. De sí. Y este señor, eh, pues sí, así como que nos dijo, ok, bueno, ¿qué, qué, es, qué, qué es diferente de, por ejemplo, estas tres compañías? No, pues es que no, pues es mejor. ¿Pero cómo? ¿Por qué? Sí, ¿por qué es mejor? Y, y salimos de esa junta así, uy, so, o sea, tristes y, y como que un poco desilusionados, ¿no? Y es lo que nos decía, este, se llama Ray, eh, eh, nos decía, no, o sea, mira, no les estoy diciendo que no lo hagan, pero, ah, o sea, ha, hagan su research y, mm. y, y sepan bien qué mercado quieren, quieren, eh, eso es sí. importante. quieren, sí. así que. ¿Dónde quieren intro, penetrar? Exacto. Mm. Y eso, eso para nosotros, una vez que, de hecho, nos tomó tra trabajo saber bien, ¿no? Qué era lo que, que queríamos hacer. Sí. Porque aquí en Charlottesville hay muchas, muchas maneras. Si uno hace, si tienes un, un negocio de catering, eh, hay muchas, aven muchas avenidas. Están sí. todas las, las, las wineries, hay 
muchas cosas que se, que verdad, se pueden hacer. La, hay, creo que son, es una de las des, de destinos más grandes para bodas. Oh, eh, sí, Charles, sí, sí, me acuerdo uh, una vez. Ah, Charles, no lo sabía. Eso. Eh, son, son 600 bodas al año, algo así, algo ridículo. Pero, eh, o sea, si tú nada más quieren hacer bodas, lo puedes hacer. Sí. Y, y digo, si lo haces bien, te va a ir bien. No, buenos, mm. buenos rodeos. Tanto, That's really good tanto. advice. That, that is, right. that is yeah. fine yeah. To, to do the research in advance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you you got to figure out what, what, what venue exactly. do you want to follow. What makes we'll exactly. it different? We're just betting. That's right. Yeah. But why? Just exactly. It's really penetrating. And Score is a great organization to help yeah. with. They, they were. The they were really good. Basically retired businessmen. Businessmen, that, right. That That's help. Right. I should say business yeah. people. But I'm sure there's business women that are in right. the store too. You're right. But um, that they help to basically give advice, pass That's on right. their knowledge. Right. Have, have and it's, it's un, you know, unbiased too, which mm -hmm. is, it, which it's really what you want. You know, exactly. like if, if obviously your parents will be yeah. like, oh, yes, well, they, mijito, you know, like, let's you, right? do this. So, <laughs> <sadly>. <laughs> no, but I mean, they're yeah. going to they're, they're, they're gonna love everything you do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. They're not going to give you, um, you know, that, that advice that you need, although some people have. <laughs> that, that's okay. That's fine. Every, there's always that family member that says, "This tastes terrible. What is this? What is this?" <laughs> yes, they uh, they do exist. But you know, then you just like oh, get out of here. <laughs> oh, awesome. Also, Rosalia is a big fan. She says we will try when we come to Virginia. Yes. So she has done a when she comes to Virginia. She's is done the, a, Is that the, the Miami woman? She comes to Virginia. She's from Miami. The Miami. I can't the, wait to meet she's her. She's come from Miami to Virginia, and she will try. Awesome. She will try your thing. Uh, Thank you for watching, Leah. How is she? How does how does she know about? She this follows show? us from Miami. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Just Miami. Wow. Unless they heard that there was a kid on the show. I thought Miami you guys said that you like guys this. were not like stars. Apparently you are. I guess we we got Miami some good, we got some connections. You know, when you're Cuban, you have some connections to Miami. Oh, Cuban's yeah. Italians. <laughs> Italian. I mean, we got all kinds of culture here. Italian. You know? The Italian probably gives us even more connections than oh, the Cuban. Absolutely. To be yeah. honest, there's, there's so Unless you know one person, the mafia, the whole mafia knows you. I mean, you know, this is great. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Depends. <laughs> yeah, it depends. Uh, uh, well, thank you so much for yes, joining us, David. It was a real pleasure. So pleasure. people can find you on 9th Street. 9 and a half Street. 9 and a half Street. Uh -huh. 920, and 9 and a half Street, uh, right here. Right Fantastic. Here. So Beautiful. be sure to check out uh, Kitchenette. And, and if you love the sandwiches, the catering is there also. Oh, yeah. So it's, and it's fantastic. Thank you so much thank for you, joining Alex. us. Thank you, Alex. Nice to see you. Thank you, Gabe. Nice to see you. Hasta pronto. Uh, Hasta pronto. Hasta pronto. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> Oh, so that was that was fun. No, that, that was good. Was fun. It's always it's always good. It's always exactly, good. Yeah. You know, just, the, just the there's so many. It's true. Just the variety of things that there are in Charlottesville. That's right. Oh, like, oh no, that's what a that's, sandwich shop with just this beautiful food. The catering that's like unique because they have a certain flair to it. Yes. You know. Well, and as he was mentioning, I mean, so if you're a caterer, you can decide what it is you want to pursue and. I mean, mm -hmm. who would who would think that there's so many people that want to get married in Charlottesville? You know, exactly. I mean, hey, had I known that, who knows? Maybe I'd come all the way to Charlottesville instead of Brooklyn. <laughs> instead of Brooklyn, <laughs> to get married. Oh goodness, a lot of fun. And now yeah. we're, we're going to do a fun transition right. from from food to, to music, to which we also stars. love. That's right. Two absolutely. more stars for our show today. We're we're really excited to be joined by Christina De Maria and uh, Jennifer Denoya from the Charlottesville Opera. Thank you both so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. We're thrilled to be here. It's, it's really exciting. It's really exciting to have you. So we'll, we'll, we'll do a little bit of, we'll do both. We'll introduce you both here in, in a moment. So I guess, Christina, we'll start with you a little bit. Tell us a little bit about the Seville Opera. Because I have to say, with my brother, Nicholas, who made the connection, he loves the uh, opera. Oh, Even that's great. I'm a classical music fan. He takes it to another level with his love of opera. And he tells me there's a Seville opera. I'm like, there's a Seville opera? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that I didn't either. even know Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Like, tell us a little bit about it. Well, we've actually been around for 44 years. This wow. is our 44th season. Um, it was formerly known as Ashlon Opera. So okay, the, okay. the opera company... So the opera company began up at um, Highland, That's formerly right. Ashland, and it was it was an outdoor music festival. Where they presented operas. We hear stories of like peacocks walking by, and this very <laughs> you know a very interesting outdoor atmosphere. And we've kind of gone back to our roots here, 44 years later, because all of our events this year are outside because we were planning through COVID. But the opera has a very rich history. Um, it we do work with elementary school age kids. We have a program for uh, young artists in the, from the operatic world who, by young, that means ages 
25 to 32 to develop awesome. their craft. Okay. And we do operas and musicals. So our name is Charlottesville Opera, but for example, Jennifer DeNoya is a right. very accomplished Broadway singer. We're so mm. lucky to have her. And it, that is in line also with what Charlottesville Opera does. Operas and musicals, primarily in the summer, but not exclusively in the not summer. Then. That's amazing. And so Jennifer, tell us a little bit about yourself, because we were really excited when, when we, yeah. we added Jennifer to the program. I'm like, wait a second. I'm, just, I'm looking at Nick. It's a real me. star here. Yeah. My brother I mean, sends me the information on right. like yeah. Broadway, London. I'm yeah. like, this is a, a big deal. What, what led you into this field in, in the first place? I guess to talent. To, yes, to, to ta- talent I mean, the right? talent, uh, clearly. Well, I guess well, I grew up being very exposed to musicals. My uncle was in musical theater when I was, when I was born. He was on national tours. So I grew up going to shows and like getting to go backstage and um, just being involved. So I kind of knew from an early age that that's what I wanted to do and I grew up dancing uh, as well. So, and that's kind of how I made my, uh, my, like my big jump because I went to college as a dance major mm. and then spent that first summer in New York and uh. just fell in love and I really wanted to, to be there and try my hand at it. So I, I moved there and I just, I was very lucky to start working. It's and, been, and if yeah. you can make it there, you can make it anywhere, right? Yeah, that that's, how it goes? What they say. That's, that's what right. they say. That's what they say. I mean, you've, got, you've definitely got some fans. Nick is already commenting. He's like, that he has tickets already. He's got tickets. That's oh, right. Yes. He's, he's going to La Boheme. So, oh, he's going to La Boheme. La Boheme, so yeah, yeah, La Boheme yeah. was yeah. one of... So what are other than What's upcoming in the opera this season that you're... Then you well, can both answer this. This that weekend, right? excited I mean, about, because I know this... Definitely some things this weekend. Sure. Well, let's kick off with this weekend. We're doing Broadway in the Park, of which Jennifer is a part of. And those programs are June 11th and 12th at Ix Art Park at 7 p.m. You can get tickets at charlottesvilleopera.org. And we have an incredible cast of five just unbelievable singers um, doing uh, selections for everything from um, State Fair, which is a very old oh, classical musical, that. all the way up to Wicked and Dear Evan Hansen. And I let Jennifer say a little bit about that because she's definitely one of the very big stars on that program. We're so happy. No, to it's, it's been incredible because obviously we've been through a very long period of time where we haven't been mm-hmm. on stage That's and right. singing I live. I've been singing from my living room wearing sweatpants and a nice top through Zoom <laughs> <laughs> for quite some time right now. So um, it, it's been incredibly overwhelming, and wonderfully overwhelming to be in a room with artists, with musicians and creatives and just get to sing live music. And I'm, I am so excited. And everybody involved is, is really incredible. And I also want to shout out to Charlottesville because I've been here a few times because I worked with a different company here, DMR, and we um, did our shows at the Paramount, which is right around the corner here. Right, exactly. And um, I just love this town. I love this town so much, and I'm I'm just very excited to be involved with the Charlottesville Opera and get to meet all of you guys. It's just well, we're certainly delighted time. to have you. Delighted to have you <laughs> for sure. Very happy to have her. So Jennifer, as someone who's like come to and now you've, you've performed in some amazing places, um, and on Wicked, especially which I know Leah would be happy are from Miami because uh, her grandson loves Wicked. Oh, He's wonderful. a huge Wicked fan. So she's taking him to see it in Broadway. Of course, he probably may even have seen you. Possibly. Uh, up it's there. a very good possibility. Um, so what, for people that maybe have the dream to pursue the arts, to get into, whether it be dancing or music, what advice would you, would you have for them? This is a really tough question because, you know, there, there are so many elements to this business that kind of, you know, it's difficult because, you know, you have to have the passion. That's the first mm-hmm. and foremost, right? It's all about heart, but you also have to have the strength and the, like, the courage to continue forward mm-hmm. because it's not an easy path. Um, what I would suggest to any hopefuls out there is just to become as immersed as possible. You know, really just, you know, whatever things you have at your access, you know, hopefully everybody has is able to log into YouTube where you could Mm -hmm. watch, you know, watch musicals, you could read scripts, you know, watch movies, study actors, you know, uh, research directors and, and people just, just to get the most awareness possible. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that that's like what would be as helpful as possible, but then obviously you can go in the extra level and, you know, take all the lessons and go see shows, come see the Charlottesville see Opera, you know yeah. what I mean? Exactly. Do the things, like expose yourself to that kind of stuff. That's awesome, that's amazing. So what's it, I guess, and even for both, both either of you can jump into this one, because one of the things that fascinates me is, like when I 
used to think of opera, I think you think of the big cities. You think of New York. Metro opera, metropolitan. Metropolitan right. Opera House and things like that. What's different or special or unique about having opera in a place like Charlottesville that's a little smaller, your locations are slightly different, you're not in huge, you know, opera house venues. Yeah. What's special about it that yeah. that's either challenges or even opportunities? Yeah, about? especially especially outdoors because I wonder I wonder about the acoustics. I mean how does that work too? Yeah, well, so there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah questions. go wherever you want. Um, <laughs> I think that, um, um, I mean, you know, first and foremost, we are typically in the Paramount, and I want to give kind of a shout out to our, our usual home theater that mm -hmm. we're thrilled to be at Ix Park and at the t now Ting Pavilion for Boheme later this month. Uh, but I think uh, what is really special about regional opera is, first of all, it's in your region. So there are many people who aren't going to travel to New York. They're not going to That's travel true. to Chicago. They're not going to go to these places. So we want, and we bring talent in. So we both have local talents who are part of our programs, mm -hmm. as well as talent, national talent, like or international talent, like Jennifer. <laughs> and that's an incredible um, richness that happens in it the is. community. And it's an incredible rich offering to the people of this community. And so mm -hmm. I think accessibility is a really important thing. Re regional opera also plays a very big role in um, both in operas and musicals in the the pipeline of the industry, so to speak. Mm -hmm. We're helping to train people, we're giving performance opportunities, okay. we're creating fans. So it all kind of works together as a system, for sure. That's awesome, that's awesome. How about yourself, what have you enjoyed about uh, coming down to Charlottesville and just performing here? Well, is, it, is, it, is it different than, I guess, being in a, in a London or a New York or <laughs> something like that? I mean, yes, it's definitely different than being <laughs> in London or New York, for sure. Those are like the two biggest hubs. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's not very different from performing on tour, which I've done both of Wicked's U.S. national tours. And I absolutely loved that because it was so fun to connect with all of the local creatives and mm -hmm. artists and, and people behind like the radio stations and, you know, the press events that you would be become a part of. Yep. Because on tour, you actually... Um, like half of the musicians are local, half of the uh, mm -hmm. hair and wardrobe, they're local. So you, you get to interact and work with these people. So uh, again, like, uh, like working with all of these different musicians, whether local or um, from different parts, you know, I have not, I did not know anybody that's involved in our shows this weekend. So now I have like a whole new little tight unit family that mm -hmm. I've become friends with. So, I mean, you kind of pick those people up everywhere you go when you're in this business. No, I think, you know, in, in reality, it's amazing. It's, 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 as you said, the fact that you can bring this to Charlesville, because if there's a lot of people that want to go, for example, when we lived in Carmel, right, to see an opera, to see a good symphony, we had to go to San because Francisco, right? right? So it's a two hour ride, right? So any, anybody that wants to see opera for the first time or symphony, I mean, we have the symphony here, of course, um, and, and, or, a, or a show, it's great to be able to have it locally and say, what's this all about? How is it? And, and as you said, you have young talent here and you mm -hmm. just may find somebody's like, wow, that person's fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it's great. I think this, you're doing a fantastic job. It is. It's such a beautiful opportunity. It's one of the things I love when you have, like, like you said, the combination of local mm -hmm. and then like international talent that you bring it together, and now you, the people are learning, they're sharing mm -hmm. the, how they perform with each other, they're making new connections. So it's just amazing to have that here in Charlottesville. It is. It's great. And there's a lot of, if I can just give a plug Go for our, our opportunities this summer. So as I mentioned, we have the Broadway in the Park this weekend. We have next week on the 17th, our opera in the parks. So it'll be operatic favorites and highlights also at Ix Park at wow. 7 p.m. And then on June 24th and June 26th is our 90-minute version of La Boheme. Okay. Um, and it's with, uh, it's updated to be set in the 1960s, kind of oh, okay. a social activism, Paris. Uh, it's going to be fantastic scenery done with LED lighting so I really recommend if you haven't been to an opera before or even if you love Boheme come see this one because it's new <laughs> it's different we have vibrant casts all across the board of these 
performances. That's amazing. So, and so, how long does your season typically run for Charlottesville Opera? Like, how long can people find you in the during the opera season? <laughs> well, so this year, because we are coming up a pandemic, mm. it's just the next three weeks. We are doing in January a co-production with Opera Carolina of I Dream, which is a, a, a modern opera based on the life of Dr. Martin Luther King, and that'll be at the Paramount. So okay. we will have nice. something later this year. Uh, but the next three weeks are really intense, so don't miss them. <laughs> yeah, right. And yeah, then right. next this summer is... it might be stretched out a little bit more. Um, and so you can look for to have not quite the rush. But you gotta you gotta jump on it for this year for sure. Yeah. So this no, is your great. shot. This, this is, is it. This if is you want to enjoy yeah. this this beautiful opera, you have to, to make your get your tickets. That's right. That's right. In the next couple of weeks. So where can people find um, get their tickets for Charlottesville? Charlottesvilleopera.com. Charlottesvilleopera.org, okay. yes. and it's so. I mean, it's Art Park is a beautiful location. The, the pavilion is beautiful, yes. so That's you right. can enjoy that beautiful outdoors yes. while listening to the to this beautiful music. Yes, absolutely. That's fantastic. Yeah. That, that's wonderful. And so, Jennifer, what part are you most looking forward to about the this coming weekend? I think it's to get to connect with the local people here because. You honestly, you never know, like what you guys were talking about, how how cool it is to bring theater like in a regional way as opposed to like it being a big, huge like New York or London. I just, I love connecting with people locally because you never know who's sitting out in that audience, who you're going to inspire or, you know, what little kid is like, oh, maybe I could do this. That's you know right. what I mean? Because right. I was that kid. I grew up in a small town in Connecticut and I, you know, was lucky enough to be exposed to theater, but you know. There, it was the people on the stage that inspired me. So I like, I like that kind of interaction. So yeah. I'm excited. Well, it's also good to have talent because I was uh, I was exposed. My my mother actually worked in the uh, in the opera, so she was mm. one of the persons involved in making the costumes. Mm. Oh, cool. So we were, I mean, I I went to her with her to see operas all the time because she had free tickets, right? But I realized early on that I could not be an opera singer, not, not even by a long shot, so, no matter what, how much I, I may have wanted. I don't think I could either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't need to be Jennifer. You got, you got right. what you do cover exactly. pretty well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, you both have some big fans. Nicholas says, immerse yourself is fantastic advice, 100% agree. That's right. He's awesome. in, he is in big agreement. Great. Well, this this has been so much fun. Yes. I, it has been so amazing Thank to have you, you yes. both on. Really appreciate your your coming on. Thank you. And, Thank and you sharing for just us. what you do, your passion, which really just comes through for it, and all these opportunities for people to go see Charlottesville Opera. So charlottesvilleopera.org. Yes. Tickets. So this weekend. This is Broadway. Is Broadway. Right. Yeah. And then in, later in June, we've got La Boheme. Yes, and Opera in the Park and next opera week. Opera in the Park, in the park yes. next week. That's Thank right. Thank you for having us. We're really thrilled. There's been an outpouring of support for Charlottesville Opera to get back on stage. Um, the you know Joseph and Robert Cornell Memorial Foundation has really helped us do this. We've had partners in Live Arts, First United Methodist Church, Paramount. They've all given something to help make this happen. And so we're so appreciative of the artistic community that comes together to help all of us enjoy the arts here. Oh, it's so we important. need Thank it, you. right? Yeah, Absolutely. this last we year do. plus, we need uh, it. We, 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 need, we need everything we can get, especially, and this is fantastic. Yeah. Exactly. It, just, it brings out joy. It, it does. So it much does. joy. Yeah. yeah, but of course, you guys are always welcome to come on when right. you have for your next season. We'll be sure to That's right. Today. Thank Absolutely. you. Hold you to <laughs> it. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. Take care. Have a great day. Great weekend. Thank you. Uh, a lot of a lot of fun. brings back memories. I tell you that. Brings much. Us into yeah, yeah. Just like I said, I'm you know, just the... just you know, get in. Of course, I, I, you know the story. I used to I used to enjoy going to to the opera first and foremost because I was I was so young. I just learned how to drive, and so my father said, "I've seen these operas. You know, would you mind taking your mother to the opera?" I said. <laughs> Can I drive? Yes. Okay. Sure. <laughs> so Good. that was the incentive, was and then the incentive and then well. just you know to be exposed to so many different ones, right? I mean, you know, whether it be Puccini operas, well, operas by Wag Wag Wagner, Wagner. right? Wagner. Um, it's it, and you know, you it, it's interesting how you you begin to learn some things that you like, some things you don't mm -hmm. like, you know, and so. But it's great that they're able to bring that here locally and people can be exposed to it because I think it's important. I think it's important to it be exposed to all different types of music, all exactly. different types of art, and then and then you can decide what you like, right? And that's fine, you know, because exactly. we don't all have to like the same thing, mm -hmm. but you need but you to be exposed to, to everything. You know, maybe you've never heard either musicals, or maybe you've never heard opera. That's right. You know, give it a shot. You, you may find yourself becoming an enormous fan. Yeah. Of just the style of music, the beauty of it, the uh, the combination 
of the visuals and the sets and the, exactly. and the talent and in terms of seeing the stories, you might just find yourself becoming a, an opera fanatic like Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick, Nick then echoes the big shout out to Joseph Cornell Memorial Foundation for supporting both the symphony and the opera. That's right, yeah, because we, when well. we go to the symphony, they're a it's big also, part of it. They are a big foundation. part of it. So that foundation is uh, definitely kudos to them because, you know, without that type of, you, you know, know support. support yeah, a lot of times these things just they, they don't they don't survive. So it's great to have that kind of support. Exactly. You know? Just yeah. the arts are a beautiful thing. So no, it really it, is. It really it is. It's all it's all part of life. Exactly. You know? It's exactly. all part of life. Well, you can buy a sandwich at Gabe's, <laughs> take it with you to It's Art Mart, and enjoy. You need, you the, need a little uh, wine though on the yeah. side. I mean, this is you know, that's true. Gabe you know. himself, I don't think he would disagree with that. No, that's I think right. He would totally support that. I have no wine. problem having a sandwich with wine. There's, yeah. this, you know, there's also there's beers. Like, I mean, there's certainly enough draft beer places here. Right, brewers here. I think there's one in, um, if I'm correct, Three Notched. Is, here? Uh, by It's our parts. Okay. Right there. So you can get your beer at Three Notched. Go right down there you the road. Are. That's perfect. Enjoy, That's enjoy perfect. a beautiful evening. Only one beer, so you're not, you know, when you leave, you know, you don't have to get caught in trouble. You know how <laughs> it is. <laughs> like yesterday, we went, uh, I know your uh, brother wasn't feeling well, so he's, um, he watched, uh, uh, I think it was the, the match between Djokovic and... Oh, uh, Djokovic and, and Berrettini. And Berrettini, right? French Open. And it got to, I think it was a quarter to 11, and there's the curfew, right? I mean, ima- imagine Paris. a curfew, because at 11 o'clock, that's when COVID comes out, so you need to go home, right? <laughs> So Paris, a, you know how I feel about that. So there's the curfew, and all of a sudden they had to stop the match so that because people didn't want to leave, they had to stop, stop the, the match, match so, that so that people would leave. Wow. Right? So it's just no curfew in Charlottesville. No, no, no so whatsoever. Can, that's a, that's a beautiful. Can, Go outside, enjoy life, you know, enjoy the theater, and um, and that's what it's about. Exactly, that's what know? it's about. Yeah. This was a, this was a good one. This uh, definitely. No, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this Gabe. Very fun. You know, I hadn't seen him for a few years, yeah, and uh, seen him for a while, hopefully, and hopefully we can begin to resume some of the events that uh, Faba has. Yeah, I, mean, I think exactly. that was great. And it's Before networking and events, I think we'll you meet a lot of people, enjoy their conversation. Exactly. I mean, bringing together Latinos and other diverse professionals. Oh yes, to I mean, was, uh, Adelante, so it's, yeah. Uh, it's a Latino event and. I, I think Latinos are only maybe like 20 or 30%. It's like every, you know, all kinds of diversity. It's but it's feel, it always feels like more. You put, well, absolutely. You put five Latinos, no, you put five Latinos, in, Latinos in a room. You put five Latinos in a room with 20 right. people, and you think that the whole room is full of Latinos. So exactly. they, bring out the, they bring out the inner Latino in everyone. Exactly. We draw exactly. it out, the fun, and the, uh, the love of food and music and everything. That's right. So exactly. it's definitely great. Yeah. And next week is going to be pretty fun, too. We're going to have... Um, Crozet Pizza Ooh, is going to be joining us. Uh, so they, so that's going to be... One of my f- favorite staples, pizza. That's it. And pizza they have and good Coke, t- pizza, pizza, pizza and beer, one or the other. It's got to be nothing pizza. else. I'm still a pizza and Coke, I think. Yeah. It's my, it's my that's go-to. at lunch, at dinner sometimes. You just dinner need a little something need a extra. Yeah. You need something extra. But they have great pizza, too. I had this... Uh, I think it was like a pepperoni with banana peppers. Oh. oh. It was a delicious pizza. Wow. So they have some great, and a great. They have a great little place. The atmosphere inside, a lot of the wood, I really know those the rough wood seating yes, 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 and yes. tables. A really fun um, atmosphere at Rosy Pizza. So it'll be a lot of fun to have them on. It's great to be young, huh, Alex? Yeah, because <laughs> I haven't been there. Because you haven't been there. <laughs> oh, <you're not. laughs> I it seems to me yeah. like, I don't know, I, I, I must work too much or something. Yeah, so but, now I understand how you, sometimes when Alex yeah, is not a, you stay home at lunch, he's not at you work. Stay home the, now this was the evening. This oh, was this after is work. Evening. Okay, you got to right. get out of the house in the evening. You got to take, take your girl and... Uh, and girl. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my mom. Hey, oh, her. My oh, mom. I thought you meant the other one. No, oh, no, I no, my mom. I guess now. My mom is your girl, so you gotta, gotta <laughs> take her out on a date to Jose Pizza. <laughs> Jose Pizza. Yeah. And just, just, if you tell your three sons you're on your own, we'll, we'll survive. Okay. I think we'll live. <laughs> oh, you go out on a date. Uh, <laughs> oh, goodness. This has been a lot of fun. It was. As always. As, it always. Was. as always, we're presented by Emergent Financial Services. Be, be sure to. Contact us. If you have any questions, you know where to find us. If you know Latinos in business here in Charlottesville, let us know. We're happy to have, we'd be delighted to have any and all Latinos and other professionals, entrepreneurs on. Just want to just keep spreading the word. 
You spread right. the word, you know. As always, we are powered by Freestyle Noel State Farm. They are definitely stars, too. They no, are, they are stars, yeah. They are, they are there. as One uh, major star and a bunch of little stars around a her. A bunch of stars. Well, as, as John said, as he commented, the Spice Girls That's of right. the insurance industry <laughs> is Freestyle Noel uh, State Farm. And they're still getting awards. They are still getting one by every, every week. There's a new... Uh, this new Circle insurance of, award. Yeah, this new insurance award that, that Christelle wow. Noel has has received. So for your insurance need, it's definitely a trusted name. Someone you can I, you, you know can what? I'm going to create a company that has awards for financial industries and just keep giving it to like this <laughs> firm that I happen to know. <laughs> Told emergent. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, and as always, we are partnering with Ford Adelante. Keep keep your eyes peeled because I think yes. Ford Adelante we are getting back into the swing of things. So we're going to have some some fun events connecting. Just Latinos with other diverse professionals here. Now there's, I mean, there's so many incredible places that we can have Forward That's Adelante right. events, FABA events. So that you can always find also at Forward Adelante. And we can announce it on, on, we can announce on it today, today Mañana. Mañana. That's where more people know about it. That's right, exactly. That's right. We'll get a nice, good crowds out, have those connections, that music, yeah. that Latino food that we've been craving <laughs> uh, at our events for the last uh, <laughs> oh, one over a year now. Yeah, it's true. Over a year. So I yeah. think... Like Jennifer was saying, it's good to be back in the swing. It is, it is. Food it feels and music so good. And outdoors. You know, definitely. Life. Think, life. Life is good. Life is good. Life is good. Well, and of course, thank you, our guests, for, for joining us. We really would, there would be no show. That's right. Without you guys watching, be sure to share. It would like, be a show, but it, you know, it's like, what's the point? You and I would just be sitting here talking exactly. as if we were in the we'd, office. We'd be boring <laughs> Judah's mind. That's right. Judah out of his mind. He's like, why did these guys come in yeah, on really? Thursday and just talk for an hour? <laughs> Uh, but we have guests, and so you all made it from from wherever you are, you. Charlottesville, Miami, New York. Thank you so much for joining us, and we're really happy to have you here. And uh, until until next thank week, you, thank, thank you, you as Judah always, and, to Judah and, and to Jerry. And we have I love Jerry Sivo here Network. today. We have Jerry here today. You can hear him laughing. That's you can right. hear laughing in the background. That's it's who Jerry. it is. And it's always fun to be here on the set of I Love Sivo. It certainly is. And just really appreciate it. And appreciate you guys, you, all you fans out there. So thanks again for joining us. And until next time, we will see you hasta mañana.